If you're looking for a fun warm-up that will get you sweating and also teach you volleyball techniques, then I have just the thing for you. Here is your coach from Volleyball with Passion. We want to help you with the design of your volleyball training and provide an extensive collection of volleyball exercises. You are welcome to visit my homepage, where all exercises are provided. Feel free to leave a thumbs up or write me a comment. Volleyball squash is a game with competition character, which can be used for volleyball-specific warming up. It combines the use of the basic technique of lower passing or attacking with a lot of fun and movement. It requires no more than a wall and a court boundary. The boundary consists of a service line, a lower wall line and a boundary on the floor. If you do not find an existing boundary that is usable, you can replace it with the following things. Benches as a lower wall line. Floor markers or similar things which lie flat on the floor as court boundary. Or tape which can be used for everything. In our example, we were lucky, the field boundary was already in place. For the lower wall line we could use a bench and our serving line was the transition from wood to concrete. When a suitable playing field has found or prepared you can also already start to chase each other through the gym. In the lower passing variant, the ball must touch the wall above the serving line during the serve, then the ball is played alternately to the wall, in addition, the bouncing ball must land in the previously defined field boundary and always be played back above the lower wall line. If the ball lands outside the field boundary or the ball touches the wall below the lower line, this is a fault and the opponent gets a point. The game is played for time or until a certain score is reached. In the attack variant, the service line is no longer needed, and the lower boundary must be raised slightly. In addition, the field boundary must be extended somewhat so that you can vary between long and short attacks. The ball is hit indirectly against the wall with an attack. The rebounding ball must be hit against the wall again if the ball would land in the previously defined field boundary. If this is not the case, you can let the ball hit the ground. If the ball touches the wall below the bottom line or the ground outside the field boundary, it is a fault and the opponent gets a point. However, if the ball touches the ground inside the field boundary, you get a point yourself. I wish you a lot of fun with this exercise and hope you enjoyed it.